my name is Roderick. And I'm Kate. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the Physics Kitchen. Kitchen. Today we'll be making a three course meal, starting with an appetizer of phyllo pastry with spinach and cheese filling. For the main course, we'll be having spaghetti and meatballs. And for dessert, rainbow cupcakes with chocolate chips. Along the way, we'll be learning about the physics behind cooking. There's a lot more than you would expect, such as heat transfer and convection, as well as other aspects of thermodynamics. So, so let's, let's get, get cooking! cooking. pastry is made up of many, many thin layers of butter and flour. When heated, the butter and the pastry melts, and the individual layers separate. The water turns to steam, leaving air pockets between the layers and making for a light and flaky pastry. Some chefs like to score the tops of the pastry before baking too. That way, the trapped steam has a chance to escape, and the pressure will not ruin the whole phyllo. Mmm, delicious! Once the tops turned golden brown, we took them out of the oven. To better understand how we made these delicious appetizers, here's a series of diagrams. This shows the uncooked layers of delicate phyllo pastry. When we cook the layers, they separate and begin to get flaky. The water between the layers is now turning into steam. In this third diagram, the pastry is completely cooked. The top and the bottom is crispiest since the heat from the oven heats that first. The middle of the pastry is soft and chewy since some moisture still remains. Mmm, perfect appetizer! Add tomato sauce by adding all our ingredients into a pot and simmering over the stove. Here, the heat from the gas stove transfers to the pot with the tomato sauce for the next three hours, all thanks to conduction. Conduction is a mode of heat transfer through one object to an adjacent object. For example, this happens when we cook the tomato sauce or boil the water. The hot stove transfers its heat to the metal pot, which is a great thermal conductor because of its low specific heat capacity. The pot transfers its heat to the contents, which cooks it for us to eat. The sauce closest to the heat will cook faster because it is the first to come in contact with the heat. Because of this, the meatballs will be cooked more on the outside than the inside. We will begin to boil the pasta now. Before we put the pasta into the pot, we need to heat up the water. These diagrams will help make it more clear. In this first picture, the water is sitting on the stove, yet to be boiled. In this diagram, the stove is now on. The heat is being transferred from the element at the bottom and through the walls of the metal pot. In this last diagram, the stove is still transferring heat to the pot of water to make up for the heat it is losing since it's not a perfect insulator. The water is boiling and starting to change states. We need to put in a certain amount of energy to change states. We can solve this using Q equals MCT, which is energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. We put 1.5 liters of water into the pot, which is equivalent to 1.5 kilograms. If we multiply it by the specific heat capacity of water, 4,184 joules over kilograms times Kelvin, and the change in temperature, 85 degrees Kelvin, we find that the energy required to boil the water is 533,460 joules, or 533.460 kilojoules. Finally, it's time for dessert. We're making a rainbow cake with chocolate chips. In order to make a white and pretty cake, we need to add leavening agents such as baking soda and powder to make it rise. These ingredients form gases that leave air bubbles throughout the cake, but this reaction only happens later on in the cooking process. When our cake is in the hot oven, the outer surface is what receives the most of the heat energy, as we've seen when we cook the meatballs. If the temperature is set too hot, the outside of the cake will cook much too fast, while the batter in the center is still uncooked and not completely reactive. As the raw batter in the center continues to cook, it will expand and crack through the cooked layers of the cake. You can see this even more clearly in our diagrams. Here, the batter is in the cup, but not yet in the oven. Now we have placed the cupcakes into the preheated oven, and the heat is beginning to cook the outside of the cupcake first. After a while, the heat transfers to the inside of the cupcake, and the leavening agents begin to create air pockets. The inside begins to expand and cook, while the outside is almost done. 
Finally, the inside of the cupcake finishes cooking. You can see the top of the cupcake is cracked to allow room for the insides to expand.